Hey guys, if you remember a couple videos ago, I made this LM1875 amplifier. Well, I'm going to test the output of it. I'm going to try it at different supply voltages. So it'll be kind of in interesting to see how the supply voltage affects the output power. Well, I'm going to test it with the 4 ohm non-inductive resistors here connected to the scope. I soldered these output wires right to the resistor so I don't have any connection loss issues. And uh, like I say, right at the output here is the scope probe. And we'll just vary the voltage on my power supply here and you know take some measurements. Before I get on with measuring the amplifier's output, Let's look at this graph here to see how we measure the amplifier's output. Well, the amplifier has to work within what's known as the supply rails. And those are indicated with the red lines, the upper and lower supply rails. So the amplifier, it takes the signal from the input, and makes it more powerful or larger but it has to work within the confines of that supply rail. So you know, the sine wave can increase up to the maximum supply rail, go to the lower supply rail, and not be distorted in any way, at least clipping or anything like that. Now if you increase the input signal and force the amplifier to make its output even larger, you run into a condition known as clipping or overload where it tries to swing beyond those rails but it can't so it just flat tops the top and bottom of the waveform and that gives you a kind of a, a grungy distorted sound but to measure the maximum clean output from an amplifier is to input a signal and adjust it so it goes all the way up to the positive all the way down to the negative rail without touching it or you know going over just barely touching it so in this example we say I'll say we have a 12 volt supply and we need to find out the RMS voltage of our sine wave which is at maximum here well, that's pretty easy. You just take one half of the supply voltage, which is six volts, and then you need to find out the RMS value. And that's RMS for a sine wave is um, the peak value multiplied by the inverse of the square root of two, which is 0 0.707. So you take six volts times 0 0.707, That is your RMS voltage. Now there's one problem. Amplifiers in reality cannot swing all the way up to the rails. There's losses inside the amplifier, like there's gonna be some loss across the transistors, emitter resistors, if it has them on both sides. So you do lose some of that voltage. So what happens is the amplifier actually clips a little bit less than the supply voltage like that they can't quite go to the rails so you know it really depends on the circuit used on the particular amplifier you know how much voltage is lost but just for this example we'll say we lose one volt on each side and now we're down to five volts so we had six volts, we lost one on each side. That's how I get five volts. Okay, so now we put five volts times 0 0.707 equals 3.535 volts RMS. So that's the maximum output voltage swing with our 12 volt supply. 
Okay, now let's find the power. How do we do that? Well, it's the voltage squared, RMS, the RMS voltage squared, I should say, divided by the load impedance. And you've probably seen me do this a lot when I was testing amplifiers in other videos. So we take our output voltage, we square it, and then we divide it by our load impedance. Let's say we have an 8 ohm load connected to the amplifier. So we get 1.56, you know, barely over a watt and a half with 12 volt supply. That's it. That's all you're going to get. Well, you might say, I, well, I have a car stereo and it, you know, it can put out a lot more power. How is that possible? Well, to get more output power, there's a few things you can do. You can reduce your load impedance. You know, you have an 8 ohm speaker, replace it with a 4 ohm speaker. You know, half the impedance, double the current, you double your output power. Another way is to use a bridge type configuration. That's where you take two push pull amplifiers, put them back to back, put the load in between them, inverse the signal on one of the amplifiers. You double your output voltage swing into the same impedance because you double the voltage you double the current therefore you quadruple your output power so that's another way to do it of course you have to watch out of the uh, minimum load impedance that your amplifier can handle in both cases another way is for the amplifier to have its own internal supply voltage or uh, power supply which increases these rails like in a uh, subwoofer amplifier for cars that can boost this uh, supply rail voltage significantly and that's about it that's how we do it so now we'll go ahead and uh, get everything set up here and start taking measurements okay time to take measurements I should mention that I am measuring the supply voltage right at the pins of the chips that one clip goes to the multimeter. This is on the heat sink because the negative rail is on the uh, tab. And right now, voltage is a little bit high, measuring at 12 volts. It is high with no load, but when I turn the signal on, you know, it drops back down to about 12 volts. And you, you can see as I put too much signal into the amplifier, it overloads and clips. And I have the spectrum analyzer mode turned on, and you can see those harmonics of the clipping. You know, the more the clipping, the worse those harmonics. But I want to adjust that so those are gone. Right at the point where those harmonics are gone, it's not clipping anymore. It's really just noise floor, nice, clean, low noise. I have to use my audio player because this thing has so much harmonic distortion, I get a bunch of jiggly lines and it's hard to see the point of no clipping. I can just kind of guess where the top and the bottom of the waveforms are not flattened out, but it, you know it's kind of hard because the way the sine wave begins to flatten out and actually we could stand to go down a little bit more I might have to turn my yeah my spectrum analyzer signal up a little higher okay that's about the point okay so I'll step through the voltages and take measurements and I'll come back with the results you can see we're drawing some current we turn the signal off it goes down to about zero there's a little bit of quiescent current being drawn by the amplifier but not very much turn the signal on again the current goes up so what I've done 
this is the supply voltage measured at the pins of the chip. This is the RMS reading I got off the scope. I made a spreadsheet and it calculated my power output. I also did a graph. It is pretty curved linear at this point. And then there's this. That might be because just an error in measurement or maybe my supply at the max level maybe it was starting to drop out well but that would have been equalized by my point of measurement the max I could go I, I went in the even steps up to the maximum of the, of the supply which was 29.2 that's why this one step is a little bit closer but anyway after that I had to use different supplies like this one and another one I have and combine them so I can go up higher on my my readings here so as you see at 12 volts DC in other words plus and minus 6 volt rails on this chip amp I got a lovely 1.73 watts of output with a 4 ohm load and uh, you know, just pause the video if you want to look at the other ones but when we increased to 24 volts we got 9.99 I mean, I'm pretty much 10 watts of output so as you see doubling the supply voltage you know more than five or six that's like six times the output power just from doubling the supply voltage and the max I could measure with my supplies unfortunately I couldn't go any higher than that was 23.38 watts of clean power so I'm just kinda estimating if I had a supply that would hit 36 volts you know that's plus and minus 18 volts I could have got a 10 volt RMS output waveform and we probably would have got our 25 watt output now I want to look at the limits of the audio amplifier output in this case the LM1875 well, I just mentioned that with plus and minus 18 volt supply or 36 volts total across the rails I can get about 10 volts RMS output with a 4 ohm load well let's find the current that's it. all that is is ohm's law and that's voltage divided by your impedance gives you the current so we take 10 volts RMS divided by 4 2.5 amps well if you look at the data sheet the LM1875 can handle 4 amps maximum I'm not sure if that's peak but we'll just say 4 amps maximum and that gives you an amp and a half of play now the thing is you don't get that maximum at all possible voltages or output voltages because of something called the safe operating area of the transistors it fit, does vary at different output voltages and the problem here is loudspeakers are what's known as a reactive load and that kind of messes up our calculations we have to consider that there's going to be a leading or lagging current relative to the voltage waveform and because of our safe operating area and all those issues and we are not leaving ourselves a lot of room for play so you now we really could be pushing the limit at 18 volts well the chip does have built-in current limit but when you're playing music you don't want to be running into current limit because you you run into distortion issues like you do with with uh, clipping that's why even though the data sheet says you can run the thing at plus minus 25 volts with 4 ohm loads don't do it never do it you also have to 
get heat out of that little chip at such high voltages into your heat sink. So again, plus or minus 18 volts, that's my limit at 4 ohm loads. 8 ohm loads, sure, you can do a lot more. I don't know what the supply voltage is, but I know the LM1875 will do an RMS 15 volts output at some given supply voltage. And divide that by 8. That's uh, under 2 amps, so we have a lot more room. And if we take 15 and square it, divided by 8, we're getting 28 watts. So with uh, 8 ohm loads and a high enough supply voltage, you, you can get probably a, a good clean 30 watts out of this chip without running into any issues of current and um, power dissipation. It's just that 4 ohms is a lot harder to drive. Well, I guess I'll wrap it up here. And thanks again for everyone watching. Hopefully it helps you out. And uh, certainly do appreciate it. Catch you later.